So you've built your creative skills to where you can be proud of your work. But how do you grow your career from there? In this snippet from his Together workshop, Ryan Booth discusses how he grew a career as a filmmaker beyond technical knowledge. For the full workshop, check out the link in the description below. So uh, the last thing I basically want to talk about is, uh, so now what? <laughs> um, cool, we talk about this thing, we talk about, oh man, it's gonna take some time, and like, you know, uh, it's all about incremental progress, like, what, what, like, uh, easy for you to say, right? Like, I want, I want to make progress now. I think for me, um, I, all I can tell you is what my progress is moving forward. There's a few things. One, I love hand, shooting handheld, it's amazing. However, like, as a DP, I know that Shooting handheld is fantastic as long as I'm not hiding a deficiency, meaning if that's a good choice or something, it's a good fit for the project, then fantastic. But just because I've never shot Technocrane, which I haven't, like I'm scared to shoot Technocrane. So like one of my goals on commercial projects is to do some Technocrane work. Like I'm, I'm fortunate enough to get to the point where like that's not outside the realm of possibility. And I wanna make sure that that's something that gets added to the tool set. Um, and I would say it really becomes about like refinement, refinement, refinement. So the way that I find, the way that I'm thinking about refinement is uh, performance, actor's performance. So am I lighting in such a way to give my uh, actors as much space and time and ability to bring what they bring to the table, which is ultimately why we're here? Um, and am I making it so that um, how can I not get in their way while at the same time elevating the visuals. So that's a big part. I think the story part, um, just continuing to understand like how sequences can cut together, being able to interpret a director's vision or my own vision in such a way that I know what I'm getting, like that it, this has been a good amount of foraging, like I'm, I'm ready to go home. I think being able to, like you were asking, I think refinement is knowing when you've got it and going home. I remember on the Revenant doc, we were shooting with the guy who was riding the horse, shot the gun in my reel. Um, so that's the original musket, he's the historical advisor on the film. And we were shooting the sequence with him. Walk out, trudge out into the woods, he's gonna show us how he shoots the rifle. Well after that, we shot with him like riding his horse and he showed us the kind of where the actual story took place, went out, shot the rifle. Then we were supposed to go back, then we were supposed to go back to his house and shoot a bunch of stuff and we were supposed to do a ton more with him. Well, it started raining like crazy when we were shooting the gun and we had to pull, we had to like stop shooting more or less. And so, um, and we basically packed everything up, put it in the car and it was like, okay, are we gonna drive back and do this thing? And Elliot disappeared. He was like, give me, give me five minutes. And he disappeared and thought for a minute basically and came back and was like, no, nope, we're good. Like we're, we're good, we don't need to, we don't need anything else. And it was like one in the afternoon, like we're supposed to shoot till dark. I was like, are you sure, man? Like, well, we could do this and that room in his house was really cool and we could shoot that sequence. And he was like, no, I like, nope, we're good. Like anything we need from him, we've gotten like the sequence I can see us using, like, no, we're good. And we like, that was it, we were done for the day. Went back and packed the gear and got ready to leave. And that for me is progress, is getting to the point where you can go, confidently, we're done. We're done lighting, looks good, let's roll camera. We've gotten the performance, great, move on. Um, so I think that, that like, that's something that I'm thinking about moving forward. So I wanna show you two clips, basically. Um, these are two moments that happened to me a year ago, but are very, like, um, I think, things I'm thinking about as we move forward. I'm, I'm obsessed with performance at the moment, like working with, with proper actors and seeing the way that you can shade a story, shade a scene, see the way that like, um, th that the collaboration between the technical and performance side of things can create something. It's one plus one equals three in a lot of ways. So this is Virginia Madsen. She's uh, got a bunch of awards. She's amazing. Um, and she was, very kind <laughs> uh, and came to like tiny town Georgia for me to do a music video for a band I'd shot a cereal box for. They asked 
They wanted to do a music video. They didn't want to be in one. And I went through, I was a little snotty and basically Last year, my goal was to work with actors, um, basically because I was finding that I was working so many doc projects and not getting a chance to really work with actors. So I said, no more music videos with Ben and I'm only like, I'm going to write a little story and like, it's either that or I'm not doing it. And uh, Lone Bello was like kind enough to oblige me on this. But, um, and the great thing is when bands start getting popular, there's a lot of people that listen to the bands that like you can start reaching out and all of a sudden like you can get to work with an actress like Virginia, you just love the band. She had no idea who I was and basically was, uh, <laughs> wanted to make sure I wasn't going to, um, that I was gonna take care of her performance. And so we had a, a lot of back and forth before we got there, but um, she hadn't gotten to do a music video in quite some time, which is a very different structure than putting a, you know, a film together or whatever. And so it was an amazing, an amazing experience. Um, the story is very loose, um, but then there's this sequence basically where it's ultimately a dream sequence in the film. She's kind of having these flashback memories and we lit it all crazy. And, um, and basically there was a moment, uh, this by the way is like five layers of CTO on the outside window blowing like a, we were blowing a joker through the window and then it was just bouncing around. And we wrapped a, that light in a bunch of gel as well. Um, but yeah, so we kind of shot these weird sequences and then I basically needed a scene in which um, she kind of, I basically was like, I need you to cry on camera. Like this is like this kind of big moment, a memory, you know? And um, she was like, okay, cool. Like how many minutes? And I was like, like five. And so we kind of messed with the lights and basically, um, I'm gonna play you this entire take. This is literally from the second I rolled camera to when I cut. Um, and she, there's, remember there's like seven people behind me. There's no music, you know, I mean, it's like, this is the middle of like, it's one in the morning. And like, this was her performance. I was like, oh, man, I mean, uh, as much as Beyond the Still, for me, I know it doesn't seem like it, that was like a life-changing moment. Like, I was operating the camera, just holding on her face. And you can see the camera starts shifting. I said, cut, and then she like wiped her tears and walked out of frame. I feel like that, for me, was like, I spent all this time like getting those lights set up and being like we brought a little like theater moving light that's that's what's doing that weird like bright light and we put red lights everywhere and red light in the other room and like I was kind of walking into and like this is a pretty badass looking scene here you know <laughs> like I'm pretty good at this um, and then like that moment had only happened once she was like I can't do it again I, like that's like or, do you have what you need because otherwise I need some time to go away and come back. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that was, it was incredible. I think it was really incredible. And I feel like for me, 
so what is like more of that? Emotion, emoting, creating space for my actors, for my crew, for everybody to like make something that feels like it's connecting with people. So, you know, was the lighting cool? Yeah, we shot anamorphic, looks awesome, whatever, but like it's, it's right here, like everything's right here. So um, to that end, I wanna show um, a little clip from, I uh, directed my first kind of proper short um, back in end of August. Um, and it's a music story uh, that I wrote with a friend of mine about actually David uh, Ramirez, who um, he was singing the backup song for that This Is Where We Live little clip or whatever. David and I have worked on a number of things together. And, and I, uh, I've just seen so much music stuff and wanted to kind of tell a story as a little um, way of saying I appreciate my musician friends. Uh, so it's, this, uh, it's basically a story about a fictional duo that um, breaks up on the night of a, a big label showcase at the Troubadour in Los Angeles. So um, I'm going to show you the end of this. Uh, it's actually the end of the film, so I'm totally blowing it for everybody. But, um, but um, I, I will talk about it from a cinematography standpoint because it's, it's very um, subtle, which I think is the goal of all of our work is that like, we're able to make these little tiny adjustments and additions that will make these things like that will elevate our work, um, basically. So uh, this right here, by the way, is a quasar tube. My um, gaffer hung this. I don't even think I was aware of them doing it. They just like he just like saw the frame and put it up, and it looks super rad, especially considering there's like a, you know, t we got tungsten leco like spotlight. We got like down light of this HMI or whatever, and he was like, I'm gonna wrap a tube. They wrapped the tube in cyan and like hung it on the wall. It looks awesome. They put them all over the, uh, they put them all under the balcony in this venue, and it looked amazing. But um, so, yeah, so this is the final film or, or the, uh, the final scene. Basically, David, um, David's character uh, quits the band, and they kind of, but the duo has this moment. They put, kind of finish this song together, and then he walks out. But I'll play it now. Was your mind blown with knowledge just like mine was? Check the links in the description for the full workshop and remember to subscribe to get more mind-blowing nuggets from professional filmmakers. And do share what your takeaways were in the comment section below. Go ahead, I'll wait.